Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 of uh, the natural language processing with R and OpenILP. Um, so if you've come to this video through search or you've not already seen part 1 of the video, highly encourage you to take a look at part 1 before proceeding to this video. Um, so in part 1 we've uh, done a quick overview of OpenNLP. Uh, seen some quick uh, examples of how we can do basic tokenization like word, sentence and parts of speech tokenizing. And then in part 2 we will, uh, that's this video here, we will be doing something a little more interesting. Uh, we'll use uh, what we have learned from the previous section and then we'll do things like entity extraction or what's also referred to as NER or named entity extraction. So that's uh, NER named that named entity extraction uh, recognition rather slash uh, extraction and then finally um, you know once we have that data um, we can visualize the output so also entity ti t1 yeah entity extraction so that's basically what we will cover in this video so going back to our code here so um, uh, so you may remember from part one we stopped at uh, retrieving parts of speech. Uh, so in this part we'll take a look at uh, enhancing that forward and using uh, things like parts of speech but um, using something like entity extraction and named entity recognition. Uh, so that's going to be our demo uh, for this section today. So uh, for us to run a meaningful uh, kind of like scenario how you, uh, you know, uh, analyze a real world example, I thought I'd pick up a, a more complex topic. So not uh, don't be bogged down by the details of uh, uh, the article itself. But uh, one of the main news these days uh, is about uh, the UK's, uh, the United Kingdom's decision to either stay in the EU or leave the EU and uh, there's been much news uh, uh, around uh, going around uh, about whether UK will stay or may not stay and uh, this is an example of uh, you know an article for example all you need to know uh, and all you need to know is uh, as you can see from the article it's uh, there's quite a lot of information so what if we could write some uh, tool if you will to uh, analyze this particular data and give us some quick insights. So say for example, you don't know what um, Say for example what the whole deal is with uh, the e UK's EU referendum and uh, you just want to quickly analyze that data. So that's really the exercise today uh, So uh, we have a couple of options. So one we could use R to uh, you know, Extract the news article just the news article section without all this uh, header, footer, etc. But um, you know that's uh, outside of the scope of this particular video. Take a look at some of my previous videos where I've shown you how you can do article extraction. But in this video, uh, what I'm doing is I've just uh, copy pasted, uh, say for example, this entire news section here uh, and put that uh, into a text document. So I have this document here which I've just copy pasted that uh, entire content. So, um, so that's the data that we're going to be using and again as I've pointed out in our previous videos uh, uh, please make sure that you have the required libraries, um, make sure you've set up our Java and uh, of course open NLP and NLP before proceeding. Uh, so first things first, let's, uh, re let's read the data. So here we are reading the content of um, the text file. And uh, you know I've got some generic house cleaning kind of like uh, code there. So uh, in essence, um, if I did want to use other text, it's kind of reusable. And then finally, as mentioned in the previous video, uh, converting everything to a text file if it wasn't already, if your source wasn't already a string. Sorry, if your source wasn't already a string, it converts it to a string. Um, so again, it's just a code that I tend to reuse for different kind of corpus of text. Um, and then again, as we did previously in part one, we'll uh, do word uh, tokenizing sentence and finally uh, parts of speech. And then we'll quickly annotate all of that. Um, and then finally take a look at what um, the annotation looks like. Uh, one of the criticisms, if you will, or shortcomings of uh, open NLP as uh, compared to 
uh, some of the other libraries is that uh, it's uh, it's deemed as fairly slow and I would uh, agree uh, as compared to say Stanford NLP for example or uh, I've seen in various cases even um, NLTK uh, Python library tends to be a bit more performant but I guess it varies depending on uh, your corpus of text all right so here's a example of uh, finally what um, uh, the underlying text is so this is basically the news article itself so here uh, the UK's referendum all you need to know so that's basically the text that's uh, extracted or, or it's uh, annotated and then finally we'll uh, um, do the core bits and that's um, the named uh, entity recognition so again uh, as part of uh, what uh, open nlp allows for us to do is uh, it extracts entities like a person by name uh, details of uh, location itself like geographic location any specific organization uh, like say google apple etc then it also allows for us to extract dates and time uh, so these are broadly the types of uh, entities that uh, open nlp allows us to extract from the text so let's run all of these uh, and then finally we'll add that uh, to the pipeline um, that's a list of all of these uh, annotators uh, so allows us to extract entities and then finally from the previous text from the original text that we had we will apply that uh, annotation and so far we are all good so now we have a plain text uh, annotated plain text uh, that uh, basically in addition to the parts of speech also has uh, the annotators for the various entities that we would like to retrieve have a quick function here that um, is uh, quite handy uh, again this is something I sourced off of uh, some Google uh, page uh, again can't remember exactly where to give the due credits but uh, this um, you know just a quick helper function um, and you'll see why in a bit but uh, it's something I did a quick Google and found uh, as opposed to me typing the whole thing so now that we have um, run all this uh, finally we get to see the end results so for example uh, within this corpus of text we would like to see what are all the people or persons uh, so if you've not uh, come across um, entity uh, extraction or uh, named entity recognition before so uh, this hopefully um, has opened your eyes into the strengths and capabilities of, um, uh, of uh, a library like open nlp so without us doing much of the grunt work if you will um, uh, open nlp has actually found from the corpus of text uh, all the various uh, uh, entities it deems as a person um, and uh, uh, again keep in mind it's not because uh, uh, open nlp was built to understand or had as part of its um, uh, underlying corpus uh, text like david cameron no it's really based on uh, underlying machine learning algorithm it uses the train data to uh, uh, to determine and detect uh, other entities like person similarly we have uh, location so um, again we can see from the text it uh, did recognize uh, quite a few uh, locations um, and also there's some incorrect uh, 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 locations is detected again that's the challenge with uh, machine learning uh, it's not always going to be 100% accurate but again you can tweak that and we'll cover that uh, in a different video how you can tweak it so that's a uh, location uh, organization so here you can see it, it did detect some organizations which is correct but also um, some uh, again it depends on how it's used in the English language or in that particular sentence but uh, here deemed UK as being an organization as opposed to um, an actual location but I think that's uh, in in terms of semantics um, I mean the root level semantics that's um, that's how the English sentence was structured so seems fair and then finally um, it abstracts dates um, and you can see that it uh, understood uh, not just the date but uh, day of the week uh, the month uh, even if there was a reference just to a year alone um, and uh, interestingly um, other types of dates uh, or anything related to a date or time reference um, so that's quite intelligent like even things like end of year wouldn't have anticipated 
um, uh, uh, an NLP package to extract, but uh, that's uh, quite handy. So again, it's uh, interesting how it's extracted all of that. So uh, well, while we've uh, extracted the data, that's um, like say for example about a person, for example, we will know who are all the people who are being talked about. Uh, but um, visually looking at this, um, quite hard, quite cryptic for us to understand. So maybe as an example we could uh, do a simple plot like um, oops, uh, entities and close the bracket so if I um, did a quick plot here let's yeah, still plotting one second plot means uh, uh, let me just change that to a table okay uh, so here we can see that once I plotted uh, that data, it's uh, it's still quite hard to uh, look at the data and analyze it. It's uh, it's all right. It's um, uh, it's given us uh, information at a glance, but uh, at a glance, sorry. But uh, uh, I really don't know what's being referred to here. And of course, we can use uh, ggplot and various other libraries and make it look much better. But um, one of uh, the libraries I tend to use for doing some quick analysis or interactive analysis is uh, uh, the Google uh, charting library. So if you've uh, not come across this library before, have a look at one of my early videos or just do a quick uh, Google search. So yeah, uh, Google this R. Come on. Alright, so uh, here you can see some quick examples of uh, data visualizations that you can do with uh, Google Viz. So again, it's outside the scope of this video, but uh, have a look at this uh, URL or take a look at one of my previous videos. Uh, so I'm going to use Google Viz to actually um, uh, do uh, some visual analysis. So again, um, earlier I tried running this and as you can see, there's quite a long list of names there. Uh, but instead, if I wanted to uh, visually uh, understand that data, I can quickly make use of uh, a Google uh, library or for that matter any other charting library. I just find Google to be really simple to install and you know, easy to understand. Uh, so uh, if you are familiar with the news or familiar with uh, UK and politics, you'll know it's uh, David Cameron as the Prime Minister and um, uh, much of the conversation um, uh, about the EU referendum uh, has uh, references to uh, David Cameron, so uh, being the current uh, Prime Minister. Uh, so it's uh, correctly uh, extracted that as well as uh, other members, if you will, who are uh, key uh, in that uh, conversation. So you can see really visually we even if you knew nothing about the EU referendum, you know who are the most uh, uh, important people uh, in, in regard to the EU referendum. Uh, we can do analysis uh, on or visualize uh, location. So again, it's, uh, it's obvious it's uh, about uh, uh, the UK. Uh, but um, here we can see the power of um, uh, entity extraction. So it's uh, correctly uh, extracted uh, things like uh, Britain, uh, UK, Britain, and uh, uh, it's it's to do with Europe and um, uh, again a lot of uh, conversations happening in London and uh, finally I guess um, uh, quite many other countries are impacted uh, if uh, EU stays, I'm sorry if UK stays in the EU so you can see references to uh, the other countries as well, interesting, yeah even United States I think Obama did mention uh, or recommend um, UK to stay in the EU and uh, I'm sure so did many of the other countries. Uh, so you can see what are the countries that have been impacted and then finally uh, the organization. So, so here we can see it's, it's all about the EU and uh, UK um, and um, the other governing bodies if you will. So EU and uh, European Union are one of the same and also about the electoral uh, commission so uh, again we can see some really uh, simple examples of um, um, you know how we can do entity extraction and do some basic uh, natural language processing uh, so this was a, a very very basic overview and uh, hopefully it's given you an idea in terms of uh, how you can use uh, the strengths of R and combine that with other uh, NLP libraries like o OpenNLP 
again keep in mind open NLP is not the only option that you have um, yeah you can use R with uh, say even Stanford NLP or um, you know uh, use um, other languages uh, outside of R to do um, these kind of NLP activities uh, I'm, I'm sorry NLP uh, analysis but uh, this was intended as a quick overview um, hope you found this helpful so that concludes part two of the series uh, do like and subscribe if you like this video and the series thanks everyone for watching